Okay, so top two things that frustrate me about my fellow atheists on YouTube. Firstly, defining atheism as a lack of belief in God. No, 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 just no. Secondly, advocating the wrong methodological naturalism. Not as obvious, but still. <laughs> Now, there are two approaches to methodological naturalism. Philosophers of science, like me, tend to think of it as applying to philosophy, describing a continuity of method between philosophy and science. As such, it rests on a denial of any foundational, uniquely a priori first philosophy, and on a provisional acceptance of the causal closure of nature. On the other hand, philosophers of religion, especially religious ones, tend to think of methodological naturalism as applying to science, describing the isolation of science from religion and, albeit often at the pleasure of one's local school board, of religion from science. This approach rests on there being a uniquely philosophical research method. One, for example, that is engaged in the analysis of an a priori realm transcendent of mere sensible particulars, and which rests on an intrinsic, compulsory acceptance of the causal closure thesis by all scientists. So which of these is the most widely held amongst the secular science-respecting YouTube 80s community? Why the views of the orthodox religious apologists, of course. One's science, one's philosophy. One thing has nothing to do with the other. There are, I think, three reasons why adopting the latter isolationist methodology is undesirable and the former continuity methodology is desirable. Before that, though, a smattering of context. One reason why the isolationist methodology has currency, I think, is the conciliatory role it has supposedly played in the various monkey trials that have dogged US educational history. The resultant anything for a quiet life in the biology classroom attitude was perhaps why, towards the end of the previous century, Stephen Jay Gould advocated his famous non-overlapping magisteria, and why the folks at the NCSE adopted something similar soon after. Unlike the continuity methodology, which is akin to banging it with a big stick, the isolationist methodology promises to smoke down the hive of irate fundies who are all a buzzing and a fretting about what science might do to their traditional certainties. This strategy was apparently vindicated in its own monkey trial, when in 2005, Judge John E. Jones III ruled in their Kitzmiller v. Dover case that intelligent design cannot be taught in science lessons because it cannot uncouple itself from its religious and thereby implicitly unscientific antecedents. Since then, the isolationist methodology, with its rather strict ideas as to what is and is not science, has been felt to be a lot more on message than the more permissive continuity methodology, especially by a number of highly influential veterans of that 2005 campaign. But those veterans are wrong. Isolationist methodology is bad strategy. So why is isolationist methodology a mistake? Well, firstly, it's a Trojan horse. Welcoming a peace offering, an apparent homage to reason and moderation, into our secular camp appeals to our progressive ideals about the essentially peaceful, moderate and rational nature of all mankind. See, we say, it was but a misunderstanding. Malice is forever just a construct of correctable circumstance. Let's wheel it in. Hostile interests, however, when their offering is amongst us, need only posit some fundy, friendly, foundational first philosophy in order to transform the conciliatory dove of isolationist methodology into an aggressive and vengeful hawk. 
we may then, unfortunately, to utilise Gould's terminology, find our bitch-assed secular magisteria getting butt-fucked by the stealthy stormtroopers of the conquering fundamentalist magisteria. And it's not like a fundy-friendly foundational first philosophy is that difficult to cook up or conceal, given the ready availability of historical ingredients. These ingredients are not, however, so easily hidden from or their products so invulnerable to the vigilant epistemic scrutiny of a continuity methodology. Secondly, it's self-sabotage. In admitting that science is, by fiat, intrinsically limited to the natural realm, atheists who adopt the isolationist methodology open themselves up to the accusation that any appeal they make to science in any argument whatsoever about existence is but blind faith. Atheists who are committed to the isolation methodology have thereby, on pain of begging the question, effectively deprived themselves of everything that science has to offer to the rational investigation of existence. From the point of view of continuity methodology, which is not so deprived, and which typically holds that science has a great deal to contribute to ontology, that resembles nothing less than a self-inflicted strategic defeat. Thirdly, it undermines security. The isolationist methodology can, in leading atheists to think of philosophy exclusively in the putatively transcendent terms dictated by its religious exploiters, contribute to the philosophobia common among secularists. The subsequent disinterest in, or outright hostility towards, the entire discipline of philosophy serving only to weaken secular defences against philosophical assault, even rather inept assault. It's not edifying for those who champion philosophy and science as a continuous truth-respecting critique to witness their secular YouTube allies being humiliated by the likes of Matthew Bell on the contingency argument, let alone on truth and non-contradiction by a borderline special needs case like Jason Burns. It is, I would suggest, the wholesale surrender of philosophy to anti-naturalism in large part as a result of adopting isolationist methodology with its implicit assumptions as to what is and what is not scientific or philosophical, that is, in part, to blame for the increasing frequency hereabouts of such embarrassments. So my advice to my fellow YouTube atheists, for what it's worth, is to firstly stop advocating a lack of belief in God as a definition of atheism. Please, I really shouldn't even have to mention this. And secondly, to at least consider the benefits of continuity methodology over um, isolationist methodology. And to that end, I'll, I'll put a transcript of this video and some further reading uh, in my blog. Thank you for listening.